Hi, everyone. My name is Arn. Hello, everybody. I'm Jimbo. And we're here to present our work regarding local pre-training for chest x-ray interpretation at the MIDO 2021 conference. We first want to discuss contrastive learning, which is a form of self-supervision that learns representations by contrasting views of images. Essentially, the pretext task here is to maximize agreement between different views or augmentations of the same image and minimize agreement between this image and a set of negative samples. Contrastive learning typically learns the best representations when we use very strong image augmentation and when our set of negative examples is very large and covers a diverse range of examples. One extension of contrastive learning is a method known as momentum contrastive learning, or MOCO for short, and it has emerged as one of the front runners in terms of top performance. MOCO utilizes a queue to maintain a dictionary of negative samples. This keeps the mini batch size small, but still allows us to cover a large and diverse set of negatives during the pre-training step. And this is really the reason why MOCO is able to achieve such competitive performance in the realm of contrastive learning. Now, what task are we seeking to uh, tackle here? And the task we're wanting to focus on is chest x-ray interpretation, which is the most widely used and important medical imaging technique. Deep learning techniques have been made possible recently by the release of large and labeled data sets like Chexpert and Shenzhen, which were used in this study. Chexpert contains a little over 200,000 x-rays with multiple pathologies, while Shenzhen is a smaller data set with around 662 x-rays, 336 have tuberculosis, and the rest are healthy. Contrastive learning has never been applied with this task. And we seek to answer the questions of whether we can produce models that have better representations, whether we can produce models that require less labeled data for good performance, and whether these models can generalize better to unseen pathologies. Our MOCO CXR pipeline uh, first begins with an adaptation of the MOCO method to chest x-rays. MOCO was developed for and applied to natural images, so it's not obvious at all that this method will work for chest x-ray. We had to adapt and adjust the model initialization for the pre-training step, choose augmentations of the images that were clinically relevant, and tune the learning rate for both the pre-training and fine-tuning step to be more conducive for x-rays. To begin our experimental pipeline, we first perform MOCO CXR pre-training on the entirety of the Chexpert unlabeled data set. And we also prepared counterpart ImageNet pre-trained models for a baseline comparison. We evaluated these models by fine-tuning them on different fractions of labeled training data and evaluating them on their respective Chexpert or Shenzhen test sets. We trained specifically linear and end-to-end -end models to evaluate both the representation and initialization quality respectively. Finally, we evaluated representations pre-trained from the Chexpert data set and see how they transferred to an external Shenzhen data set to assess how well this model pre-training step would transfer to a data set that was unseen in the pre-training. Uh, so Harry previously explained the MOCO CXR training pipeline. Uh, I'll continue on to explain the experiments that we conducted. Uh, so here we're showing that the models are trained using two different uh, backbones. So they are ResNet 18 and then Step 121. As explained before, we run two experiments on each model. Uh, one experiment is the model is loaded with ImageNet pre-trained weight. And in the other experiment, the model is loaded using uh, MOCO pre-trained weights. Uh, for this particular set of comparisons, uh, we are freezing the embedding layers. So only uh, training the uh, top level classifier. And for both backbones, we are seeing that the uh, MOCO pre-trained models have significantly better performance uh, than the non-MOCO pre-trained models. Uh, in the end-to-end -end training setup, uh, we uh, unfreeze the models. Uh, that is, all the model weights are allowed to be trained. And with this setup, we are still able to uh, observe performance gains for the MOCO pre-trained models uh, for both the end-to-end -end training setup and the previously mentioned linear classifier setup. The most performance gain is observed at low label fractions. Uh, this is consistent with previous uh, works in self-supervised learning. And these results demonstrate that our uh, MOCO pre-training method can, can be very useful when limited number of uh, training samples uh, are available. And uh, we also transferred um, our results to an external Shenzhen data set. Uh, so we evaluated this uh, uh, on the uh, 
Schindel tuberculosis uh, test. Uh, the observation that we can make here uh, is similar to that we made for the Shenzhen data set. Uh, so we, uh, we see that uh, pre-training our um, data on chest X-ray images not only improved the performance on chest work, uh, but it can also be applied uh, to other chest X-ray tasks as well. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, we successfully adopted the MoCo pre-training uh, to generate high quality transferable representations uh, for chest X-ray interpretation. During our experiments, we observed that there is noticeable difference between natural images and chest X-ray images, which means that researchers who work on chest X-ray interpretation should consider uh, further pre-training on chest X-ray uh, images in addition to just loading the ImageNet pre-trained models. And finally, we believe that our method is broadly extensible to other medical imaging tasks uh, where high quality label data is expensive, but the uh, large amount of uh, label data is actually readily available. So that concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you for your time and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.